Hello friends, welcome back to All on Unlaw. Uh, this is a YouTube channel dedicated for uh, medical students, nursing students and the physicians who want to appear for uh, postgraduate studies and for uh, even for uh, pharmacy students and the patients. So guys, before starting a topic, today's topic is going to be on USMLE step 1, that's a paraneoplastic syndromes. Okay, so I'll be discussing here briefly about the paraneoplastic syndrome. So before starting a discussion on this, let me tell you about our channel that's all on law. We have nearly more than 500 medical video lectures for USMLE, MCCE, UK, Canadian, Australian, IFOM, NBME, Complex and for nursing students and the pharmacy students. So we have lot many videos in our channel and the lectures are delivered by the physicians from UK and from USA. So I request you to subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends. Okay guys, so recently we are uploading more videos from cardiology and um, ophthalmology and nephrology. So guys, please do subscribe and please share our videos with your friends. And thank you so much for those who have subscribed and who have shared our videos among your friends. Okay guys, this is about the USMLE, USMLE step one. Um, this can help uh, you guys for uh, even for uh, medical students and even for those who are appearing for their medical board examination um, like step one or uh, for other board examination in their country definitely it will help and okay guys so let me start with this this is regarding the paraneoplastic syndrome paraneoplastic syndrome okay guys so this is regarding paraneoplastic syndrome I will be discussing briefly and the important points that will help you to score more in, in your USMLE step 1 examination so guys brace yourself and let me start before starting this let me define what's paraneoplastic syndrome is a paraneoplastic syndrome is nothing but it can be a disease or it can be a symptom that is a consequence of the presence of a cancer in the body okay there will be a cancer in the body okay but the patient will be having symptoms or a disease that is not related to what you call um, this cancer okay guys so it's not at all related to this and this is because of some hormonal changes it can be due to some hormones that the cancer is producing or it can be due to the cytokines okay guys I don't want to go in detail okay this is briefly I'm gonna discuss I want to save your time and discuss very briefly and very important points in a short time so let me start with this the most important things in your assembly examination what they will ask you is a hormone okay they will give the hormone and they will ask you the the cancer that the patient could be suffering from this okay I will write a CA okay guys so now I will ask you let me change the color and that will become very interesting A C T and H A C T H now tell me the conditions where you see ACTH or ACTH like peptide. This is a really very important. Can you guess? Okay. I hope you are telling. Okay, now I will tell you the answers. The cancer in which you see ACTH is small cell cancer of lung. Okay. You can call it a small cell carcinoma of lung. What will be the effect of this? The effect of this, because of this ACTH, the patient will have the sign and symptoms of a disease known as Cushing's disease. Cushing's. Okay, Cushing's disease. 
or a syndrome. Uh, there is a difference between the syndrome and the disease. Uh, I have discussed this, what is the Cushing's disease and the Cushing's syndrome uh, in my previous video. You can type over there and you can find out the answer. So let me move on to the next important, what you call, um, hormone. Let me write here, hormone and the cancer. Okay. See, I should have written. Let it be, doesn't matter. Let me move on to the next one. I'm going to ask you this regarding the PTH RP. Okay, that's a parathyroid hormone related peptide. So now you tell me the conditions are in a cancer. In which type of cancer do you see this PTH RP? Good. Uh, this can be seen in squamous cell carcinoma of lung. Okay, of lung. Okay, uh, it can be seen in the renal cell carcinoma. Okay, renal cell carcinoma, or it can be also be seen in a cases of breast carcinoma. No need to get confused or no need to go in detail regarding which type of breast cancer you see PTHRP. It's not needed. Okay, for USB step one, I'm asking. Okay, guys. So this is again PTHRP. It's a raised in a patient suffering from squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, renal cell carcinoma, and the breast carcinoma. Okay, let me move on to next one. A hormone and cancer. Change the color. Okay. So now the hormone gonna be 125 OH D3 that is known as calcitriol. Calcitriol. Okay guys. My handwriting sucks, right? Okay. So calcitriol. So tell me the cancer in which you see elevated D3. That's calcitriol. It can be first. What you need to remember is a Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. So uh, and some cases of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma also. You can remember. The most important point over here is what you need to remember is Hodgkin's lymphoma and the few cases of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. What will be the condition of the patient if the, this one is elevated? the patient will have signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia 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 okay so what will the signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia just find out it can be um constipation okay so there are symptoms headache okay urinary stones blah 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 let me change the color blue one Okay, now I'm going to ask you hormone and the cancer. Let me move on to the next important point. That's ADH. Antidiuretic hormone. Okay, so where do you see ADH? Right, it's a small cell carcinoma of the lung. Okay, guys. And the other, what you call intracranial, intracranial cancers. Intra, within brain. Okay, intra cranial within the cranial cavity intracranial cancers right I hope you're getting me because of this elevated what you call uh, ADH the patient will develop a disease that is known as SIADH right in my previous video I explained very clearly about SIADH how it acts and what is the management really very important just type SIADH by all on and law definitely you will get this video okay guys let's move on to the next important topic hormone and cancer let me change the color okay uh, let me take this time erythropoietin erythropoietin Okay, now you tell me where do you see in conditions where you see this what you call uh, elevated erythropoietin. So most important what you need to remember is the renal 
cell carcinoma. Exactly, you're right. And the other cases, the other conditions, the most important is this one. Okay. The other things what you should remember is hemangioblastoma. Hemangioblastoma. Okay, guys. Hepatocellular carcinoma. Hep cancer. You can remember. Hep is not hepatitis A or B. It's a hep. I'm uh, briefly, I'm telling you. This is a hepatocellular carcinoma. And the other case, you can see over here, is a pheochromocytoma. Pheo chromocytoma so just remember the four conditions the most important thing where the erythropoietin as a paraneoplastic syndrome that is elevated is seen in a, uh, a patient suffering from a renal cell carcinoma and the most common okay the other things are hemangioblastoma hepatocellular carcinoma and the pheochromocytoma okay guys let's move on to the other important point that's antibodies against what you call uh, calcium channel okay antibodies against calcium channels so this is very important and regarding that erythropoietin I forgot to tell you that if erythropoietin is elevated what the condition you see in this patient is polycythemia okay very important polycythemia okay the antibodies against calcium channel what do you see the way you see is small cell carcinoma of the lung Guys, I want to ask you, if the patient is suffering from the small cell carcinoma of the lung, what all things are elevated in this as a paraneoplastic syndrome? It is ACTH, okay? It is ADH, okay? Right? And it's nothing but what you call PTHRP, parathyroid hormone related protein, and what you call the uh, antibody, uh, antibodies against calcium channel, okay? Right? You can write here is calcium channel, okay? Just remember calcium channel, that's good. So these are four conditions, very important. This is such a common and a, such a disease or a carcinoma where you see four, nearly four, that is important for USM examination or ACTH, ADH, PTH, RP and a calcium, okay guys? That's good. So this is regarding this uh, and the, what, what type of cancer or what type of uh, effect you will develop if the patient is suffering from a carcinoma, a small cell of uh, small cell uh, carcinoma of the lung and he has elevated uh, what you call uh, cal uh, antibodies against calcium channel and the effect will be the syndrome that is known as a Lambert Eaton syndrome. Lambert Eaton syndrome. Okay. All right. L E S. That's good. So now I'm going to discuss briefly, and these are very important. The important for USMLE examination, for USMLE step one or step two CK, the things what you need to remember is ACTH, as a paraneoplastic syndrome, ACTH, ADH. Okay, then we have erythropoietin, erythropoietin. Erythropoietin, my spelling sucks. Okay, guys. And uh, anti uh, antibodies against calcium channel and uh, calcitriol. Very important. Okay, calcitriol. So these are very important for USMLE step one.